Let's recap what we've learned so far about Spring Run Chinook Salmon. Spring Run migrate upstream during springtime due to heavy snowmelt flows. Because of this, they can penetrate high into upper California watersheds. Once there, they find a deep cool pool to hang out in for like six months where they live off their fat reserves and occasionally jump for joy. They spawn in the fall. The problem is that dams have all but limited spring run Chinook salmon access to these upper watersheds. There's only three creeks left, all without dams, in the entire Sacramento-San Joaquin River system where spring run Chinook salmon still persist. Butte Creek, Mill Creek, and Deer Creek. In Butte Creek, we saw a lot of salmon. It's the last remaining stronghold for spring run Chinook in California. In Deer Creek, not so much. The populations in Deer and Mill Creek are near an extinction. To learn why this collapse is happening, we met back up with biologist Matt Johnson on the banks of the Sacramento River. Instead of Joe, what we got here, Yeah, we're right here on the Sacramento River at um, River Mile 220 from the ocean, just downstream from the confluence of Deer Creek. So this is really like a, a two-way street. You have juveniles leaving here, and we actually have adults coming up Deer Creek oh, right okay. now. So like we're um, ships passing in the night here. Yeah, we're it's it's mid-April, and this is actually peak migration timing for adults entering and juveniles leaving Deer Creek. We actually saw this when we were swimming under that bridge on Butte Creek a few episodes ago. Oh yeah, dude. Yeah, looking real cool. Those were the adults, but look right there. Those little guys. I do believe those are juveniles. I'm pretty sure there was juvenile fish going downstream, juvenile Chinook, and big honkers going upstream, so. <laughs> Some juveniles spend most of their early life history rearing in Deer Creek before making a rapid run to the ocean. But many more Deer Creek spring run juveniles come down here to rear and grow before making that final dash to the ocean. So this is an important transition in a young salmon life because they're coming out of Deer Creek, a small environment with fewer predators into a larger environment where you have lots of big fish that eat little fish. You got a lot of birds who, who eat small fish and these, these juvenile spring run have to navigate through 220 miles of this new big dog eats little dog world. So it's kind of running, running a gauntlet a little bit. They're running a gauntlet of, of stuff that wants to eat them. How do we get a sense of numbers uh, obviously when they enter the main stem, but just a sense of, of the amount of juveniles that are coming down um, Deer Creek right now to, to enter the Sacramento, or is there a way we can kind of get at least a sample of those numbers? Yes, there is. We, we use a, a common tool to use that is a, a, a device called a rotary screw trap. So, rotary screw trap, I presume, it's a lot bigger than I thought it was gonna be. Um, where are we on Deer Creek right now? Yeah, so we're here, um, it's a couple river otters. Oh yeah, see them over here? Yeah. In the far bank. Got some river otters in the neighborhood right now. They're just eating all the That's babies That's qu quality habitat. They're actually probably cruising the bank right now yeah. for some crustaceans maybe, they huh? Some invertebrates. Good. Good. So we're at um, 
what I consider to be the valley floor reach of Deer Creek. We, we are, Deer Creek has just left its canyon where, or upper Deer Creek, the, the reach where adult spring wren go to spawn, some juveniles rear for a long time, but all the juveniles need to pass this area on their way to the Sacramento. Okay, so, so this is a great spot to get a sense of how many juveniles are leaving that pristine habitat before they enter that gauntlet. We're counting them right here. How does this screw trap, rotary screw trap, work to count the fish or get a sense of their numbers? You, you see that opening or that mouth, fish swim into it and they're directed through the cone. The cone spins them down into a, a box. We call it a live box and holds them there, holds the fish there. They can't get out of it until we come in there and let them out. And what we do with them is, we can obtain life history information on the fish, such as the date we captured them and how big they are at that okay. date. Okay. And, and you can actually take that data many steps further to actually estimate how many total juveniles are leaving in a season. Okay, okay. What do we, what do we got here, Matt? So Joe, what we got here is a juvenile spring run Chinook. Super on his cool. way out of Deer Creek, on his way to the Pacific Ocean. So this fish, his, his parents have died months ago in the spawn last fall. If he or she somehow makes to the gauntlet and goes to the ocean and dodges all the other predators there, he or she's gonna come back. And, and how much bigger are they gonna be? Right, so that's what's truly amazing about Pacific salmon and, and, and really all, all salmon but spring run are really special is the amazing transformation that's going to go on and that transformation is only made possible by these fish going to the the giant supermarket that is the Pacific Ocean there, there is not enough food in Deer Creek for this fish to grow to 20 pounds with that size comes fecundity with that size, they, they are able to generate a lot of eggs and carry those eggs back to Deer Creek to make a lot more babies. This is so cool. Well, uh, the species continues for at least, yeah, all, all the hope is in this a is few of these. The future of Deer Creek Spring Run and boy, he's got a tough road ahead. I'm guessing the rear and habitat in Today's Sacramento River is not quite the same as it was for the last 10,000 years for salmon? It's not. You know, what, what has happened in the Sacramento in the last 150 years is, is we've transformed the habitat. We've tamed the flow of the river with Shasta Dam, so, so flows are regulated now. In addition to dams, we have tamed how the river spreads out by building levees. So we're kind of on almost a levee now. So we're like, what, 20 feet above the river? So historically, this time of year, the river wouldn't be this narrow, right? It'd be kind of spread out on a floodplain. And where that water would spread out would provide really good places for juvenile fish to rear, a place for them to grow, get larger, to, to get charged up to make that that final push to get to the ocean successfully. So we're talking like they're they're eating, but they also have places to hide. And as that wa I guess yeah. as that water spread out, there's just more available food sources for a juvenile salmon. There's more places for them to hide. It's just it is better rearing habitat, right? That's exactly right. Okay. It, as Matt said earlier, there's two types of juvenile spring run Chinook salmon. There's the first kind that will stay in Deer Creek for a whole year to rear in the upper watershed. But this little guy, like many of his brothers and sisters, is answering a call from deep in his genes, passed down from salmon that spawned in the dawn of time. Downstream, he has told, lie vast floodplains to rear in, or fast moving spring flows that will carry him to the ocean if he pleases. But alas, as Deer Creek winds into a modern, altered watershed of levees, low water, and hungry predators, he will find neither refuge nor respite. Most likely, he will never feel salt on his skin, nor the crash of ageless waves. 
So why the healthy spring run population on Butte Creek? Do its waters not also lead to the Sacramento River? Butte Creek has so many fish spawning in the fall, even the bears here were bored on film. The question then, why is deer doing so poorly when it has equal, if not better, spawning habitat to Butte Creek? Why? Alan tells us. I look downstream, I can literally see, you know, spawning activity as far as I can see this way. I literally am watching one jump right now, way down there. Not jump, but actually making a red. You see him here. You see him just upstream of us too, so you know, both directions. This just looks like, you know, a very healthy population as opposed to what we saw on Deer Creek. We saw three, three of them, you know, over a, over a half mile stretch. Um, explain to me, what's, what's going on in Butte Creek? Why is this, what, what's the significance of Butte Creek for, for Spring Run? So, Butte Creek has a valley portion when Alan says the valley portion, he's talking about the access to juvenile rearing habitat that fish that, that are born here on Butte Creek are afforded. Really, it's the Sutter Bypass area. Basically, having that long period in the valley and the warmer water with good food sources allows them to grow to a size uh, like no other juvenile salmon in the Sacramento system. What that means is that when they get into the river, they're a lot more adept at it, avoiding predators, finding food, uh, you know, finding you know, places to hide and so forth. So, and they have about 60 miles less river to go down than a Deer Creek or a Mill Creek fish. So we're talking, so we're saying that there's a healthier juvenile entering the main Sacramento River and it has less time in the main Sacramento River before it gets down towards the delta and then eventually the ocean. Yep. Butte Creek juvenile salmon have rearing habitat. Deer Creek juvenile salmon do not. It's as simple as that. This is a baby. This okay. fish probably hatched out of the gravel in March. He's been growing in Deer Creek. There's some, there's some good food for him up there, but he's decided this is his time to, to make the journey. And, and he's on his way. He was briefly interrupted in our screw trap here. Uh, we've got to look at him. We were able to take some data. We measured him and weighed him. And we're, we're going to send him on his way a little bit and wish him luck. Okay. Before we do that, can I... Can I get a moment for a moment yeah. here? Yeah, uh-huh. Yeah, you wanna have a moment? Yeah. <laughs> okay. Well, I'm not gonna put this uh, easy to you. When you get downstream, it's gonna get real rough. And that's, that's on us. There's gonna be a lot of hungry fish. Um, you got a pretty low chance of actually making it to the ocean and uh, Again, uh, we apologize for that. So here's what we're gonna do. I want you to find some cover, swim as fast as you can, and then when you get to the ocean, watch out for the sharks. There also could be uh, killer whales. Good luck, little buddy. All right, we're gonna send this guy on his way. All right. Good luck. Best of luck. Slim chances. Yeah, and he's gonna go hide first in this cover. Good, good. <laughs> Stick to that plan for <laughs> yeah. 220 yeah. more miles yeah. or 230 miles from here, that's, right? That's the program, little dude. Hide. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> nice. Where the Wild Realm is hosted by Joe Flannery. My grandfather was a park ranger. My parents were both park rangers. I was the third generation. I've been lucky enough to spend my entire life outdoors, learning and working in conservation. And I'm excited to share that knowledge with you. With Kyle Lancaster. Lately, we've been getting into conservation filmmaking. We believe that a conservation ethic begins with education and understanding. Never stop learning about the natural world. And hey, if you like the show, please support, share, subscribe, follow, like, and all that stuff. Let's start a movement that prioritizes wildlife, 
by all places, and conservation within our daily lives. 